Welcome to Grace for Today. Blessings, everybody. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to do both. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. And I'm not going to let the enemy dim my shine. This morning, that little song was in my heart. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Y'all know we used to sing that everywhere I go, Sister Sandra. I'm going to let it shine. I know we sing a lot of cute, more cute songs now. But listen, the principle is still the same. Let your light shine before men that they will see your good works and give glory to your Father. Hallelujah. And bless our great God. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to give you all a couple of moments to come on. And uh, my aim was to be on before 715. Didn't quite work, but y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Let it, Sister Sandra. Yes, I know it is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. 100 watts. Man, I tell you what. The Lord is good to me. And um, so... God bless everybody. Hey, y'all. It's good to see you all. And I want to call everybody's name, but time does not allow me to all the time. But I'm so glad to see you on. Blessings. The grace of God shine, his face shine upon you. May you find more joy, more peace than you ever imagined. May the hand of God rest upon you. And everywhere you go, you see favor. Sister Heather, may you see favor today everywhere you go. Felix Greenwood, may you see favor and the hand of God everywhere you go. God bless everybody, and I speak that same word to all of you. May the light of the Lord light your path. His word, the entrance of his word brings light. It produces. The light of God produces in us. God bless you all. Let's get started. So, We've been talking about destiny destroyers. Now, you know, some of y'all probably been thinking, you know, Sister Eddie, you've been talking about Hannah a whole lot and her destiny wasn't destroyed. No, it wasn't. But she had to come to a point that it wouldn't be because she had someone bullying her, calling her names, uh, making it evident that she was less than or to make her feel inferior, giving her low self-esteem. And that she was not going to ever have the God's best. Some people believe. Good, Share with them Hicks boys. Love those Hicks boys. Love those green boys. Love those Reuben boys. Love those gray boys. Lo who am I missing? Love Lucas. We just are love the barn. Well, there's only one Barnes boy. So God bless you all. All these children, these young men, these young women. We're expecting great from them. Because we believe God to order their steps. And yes, congratulations. I think it's to our Deborah Giles daughter, uh, Khadijah, I think it is, who passed her um, her RN. So blessings to her. And God did that, baby. God did that for you. It's not because we're so smart. God gives us favor. And he helps us to do what we couldn't do on our own. Let's get that. Let's go back to the word. First Samuel chapter 1. Let's look at this. And we're talking about how, and I know we put, uh, and yes, we're praying for uh, that, 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 uh, that can trail. All right, God bless you. Yes, indeed we are. So listen, we're looking and we've been talking about Hannah going to the house of God. You know, I said this last week, I'm going to say it again today. Uh, she got to the point with Penina, the bully. Penina had a reason to be glad. Yes, she did. But because Elkanah loved Hannah more, it caused her to have a real issue with Hannah. Though Penina was doing everything, she was producing babies. Yes, she was. But sometimes, and I said this the other last week, sometimes we're like uh, Haman in the scripture where we have everything going for us, but because someone else gets attention, we want to stop. Hey, Brenda Ingram, blessings to you. We want to stop looking at what God has blessed us with to say what we don't have. Good morning, Deacon Hicks. Uh, we we want to just look at what we don't have. Beloved, that's a trick of the enemy. 
That's a trick of the enemy. Look at what God has done for you. Look at what he's doing for you. We forget and we can all, sometimes we see what we don't have and forget what we do have. You better think about what you got. So don't be like Penina and become angry and agitated because someone else, is getting the affection and the adoration and the attention that you desire, though you're doing what you should do. Hannah was, was just distraught consistently because she was always bullied. But here, she had had enough and she said, I'm going to tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I don't know that song either, but, but it goes on and says, for he knows. Anyway, I don't know that song. Y'all know that song. All right, listen, sing it today. It'll help you. Hannah goes to the house of God. She goes to the house of God and she begins under her breath to pour out her grievance, her complaint to God. I'm sure she had already poured her complaint out to Elkanah, but he couldn't fix it. He could not fix it, but God can. God could. And you know what? God did. So let's pick up there where Eli, the man of God, Eli, the one who should have been able to discern there was something deep inside of this woman. She was not the daughter of Belial or the devil. She was not there drunk. She was there pouring out her grief to God. Mm. Pouring out her grief to God because God was the only one who could open up her womb. And beloved, I'm here to tell you today, God is the only one who can open the door for you. Matter of fact, you'd rather God open things for you. You'd rather God give you favor than people do it on their own because they feel like they're giving you a favor you now owe them. God doesn't do that. Good morning. God doesn't do that. God will bless you. And all he wants in return is to give him the glory. Admit he did it. It's him. Thank you, Sister Heather. Girl, you rescued me. I can't sing it now, though. But y'all got the lyrics right there. Y'all better hear it. All right. So when God opens, and sometimes it seems like uh, we get let go from this thing rejected from that thing and we think that it's over listen sometimes god has to shut a door to catapult us out so that we can get into what he has for us i've seen him do it i've seen him do it let's look so here eli says to to, to her uh she says to eli i'm sorry no my lord i'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit she had been sorrowful for quite a while, apparently. It had become second nature to her. Beloved, that's not who God, the Lord called you to be a joyful bearer of seed to produce. But sometimes we get stuck in heaviness, in depression, in weariness. We get stuck in whatever the doctor has diagnosed us with. And we don't believe we should go any higher than that. But the Lord says, come on up a little higher. Start expecting me to intervene for you. Start expecting me. Look for me to move for you. Get my word in you so that you'll have light for your path. Let's not accept the status quo. Let's expect greater. Let's look for greater. Let's expect God to move for us, to intervene into our difficult places. When we're being bullied by the adversary, the scripture says when the, when the enemy comes in, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a barrier, a standard against him. Because it is certain, I have, a, I have one of my notes that I want to cover as a topic for grace for today, is uh, the certainty of tests, trials, and tribulations. The certainty of tests, trials, and tribulations. We cannot think that we'll only receive good at the hand of the Lord. Your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tried. But the scripture says, be of good courage. I've overcome the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to be tested. Yes. But no, you're coming out. If you keep the faith, you're coming out, you will have learned something and you'll be better. You'll do greater works. 
The, the Lord Jesus told Peter, I'm trying to give you an example. The Lord told Peter, he said, uh, when you're converted, he says the enemy has desired uh, to sit, desired you and to, to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you. It is clear Peter's faith was going to be tested. Beloved, get rid of that mindset that says if, if something's wrong, then it, you know I, I must be doing wrong. Not necessarily. Job didn't do anything wrong. Peter didn't do anything wrong, but God, Jesus wanted to encourage him that when your faith is tested, when you have this great trial of affliction, when you go through tests, trials, and tribulations, when the enemy comes in like a flood, or when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God, whichever one you choose, it is certain that you're going to get tested. Your name may not be Hannah, but you ought to know I'm going. there's going to be a test. And I'm going to pass. And if I don't pass it, I need to go back and, and do it. Study again. Because it's coming up again. Let's pass. Let's know that when trials come, the scripture says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't, don't act like it's strange that your faith is getting tested. Don't think it's strange that the enemy is coming to try you. Don't think it's strange you've got to use your faith. The scripture says strong meat belongs to those who uh, have, have exercised or used their faith to be, their faith has been challenged and they come out victorious. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. The idea of a victory is that there's something that was opposing you, that you had to press through, you had to fight through. I'm just saying, good morning. God bless you, Mr. Wolfolk. We must be clear. Your faith's going to get challenged. The enemy wants to be sure you never come into your wealthy place. You never come into your promised land. You never possess your possessions. You never overcome that depression, that low self-esteem, that inferiority complex, that you remain uh, stuck in uh, that spirit of infirmity. Whatever it is. Jesus said, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Listen, he says, when he, he, Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? I know I'm talking about Hannah because I need you to get this because the condition of Eli suggests there was no discernment at all. But God wants to raise up men and women who will be his voice in this earth. You may never be sent to the nations. But wherever you are, God will use you for his glory. You don't have to be perfect. You need to be willing. You I got to go. My time is gone. You need to be willing. Even when you're being tried, worship. You know, when you get down, and we're not there yet. When you get to verse 28, this scripture says, uh, and he worshiped the Lord there. Talking about Samuel. He worshiped the Lord there. It wasn't a praise and worship. He worshiped. The word worship really means to, to serve God and give him what he is due. That's what we do when we do things at church, not just the worship service. We actually worship God with our lives. I got to go. 729. Listen, we're going to pick this up tomorrow, but I want us to get it. The enemy wants to steal kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life belongs to you. Abundant life belongs to you. Abundant life belongs to you. I want you to know that. I'm going to type this in real quick. It belongs to you. It belongs to us. It's ours. All right, I gotta go. Listen, I'm gonna pick this up tomorrow. First Samuel chapter one. Y'all read ahead of me and allow the Lord to speak to you. Allow him to speak to you so that you can still do great things for the kingdom of God. Not for the accolades of men, but that our God would get the glory. All right, Father, thank you so much for what you've begun in us. Stir our hearts even more. Stir our desire to please you. Bless every listener, every viewer who's listening now or catching the replay. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would give us confidence, 
toward you. No fear. Young men, young women, no fear. Yes, things may be beyond our control, but God, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. God, be our healer today. Heal our bodies, heal our minds, heal us on the inside. Help us to speak your word. You sent your word to heal us. Thank you for showing yourself strong for us. Thank you, Father. Let your will be done in us. And we receive it even now. Bless our children as they go to school today. Protect them from evil influences. As they go to work today, protect them from evil influences, evil relationships. Bring good, godly, wholesome relationships into the lives of our sons and our daughters. Cut off everything you've not ordered for their lives. And we'll thank you for it. And we'll give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, so it is. Amen. All right. God bless you all. I praise God for everybody. I pray that God will bless your every endeavor and that you will see the hand of God on your life and that the favor of God would be upon you. All right. Upon you and your children, on your spouse, everybody, your significant other. All right. All right. All right. So I got to go. Y'all have a great day and uh, pray for somebody else. Call somebody's name. You don't have to know all their business. Just pray for the folk who watch Grace for Today. God really does know who they are. <laughs> and he knows what they're going through. Amen. Y'all, and speak to those teachers who are having to instruct our children and who have difficulties because of children who are not behaved well. I don't... I, you know, praise God. Let's just pray for our school systems. The devil wants to destroy anything and anywhere. Let's not give him that grace. All right. God bless you all. Listen, join me in the morning. Don't forget to share the video. Type in catch the replay. Hashtag graced for today. Blessings to everybody. I'm so glad to see each and every one of you. Join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. And I'll put this on our YouTube channel. Same name, graced for today. And um, please subscribe to both if you don't mind. Uh, and uh, join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time. Until then, remember this. Time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.